Moving on now to Cincinnati and head coach Tommy Tuberville. The Bearcats are 4-3 and three overall, 2-1 and one in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, Cincinnati was in action this past Saturday against USF. Cincinnati won the game 34-17. to 17. Up next for the Bearcats will be this Friday at Tulane, 8 p.m. Eastern time start on ESPN2. Uh, Coach, thank you for joining us on the call today. If you would take a minute to tie up the win against USF, then we expect to see as you head to uh, New Orleans uh, on Halloween for the game against Tulane, please. Yeah, thank you. We've uh, we've got a little momentum going. We played our best game of the year last week. We're starting to get some guys back healthy. Uh, we're looking more like a football team each week on both offense and defense. Our special teams uh, probably played one of his better games last week. Uh, you know, we've just been we haven't been worried about the team we've been playing. We've been working on fundamentals and and uh, trying to get better with all these young guys. But uh, it's good to start getting guys back healthy and having more depth. Uh, Tulane going to New Orleans. Uh, uh, second half of the season, uh, you know, we we need to continue to play well. You know they've had a week off, uh, and uh, I'm sure they've got some people back healthy. But uh, I'd rather not have a week off right now. I think the way we're playing, we need to just try to keep our momentum going. But uh, uh, they're a much improved team. Uh, you know they've got several quarterbacks. They've got good young running backs, and uh, we're just looking forward to going down and playing in a new stadium. I've coached against Tulane before. When I was in the SEC and uh, been in the Superdome, but uh, looking forward to uh, coaching in their new stadium. Big questions for Coach Tuberville, please. Star one on your telephone to join the queue. The operator will introduce you. We'll go to Dom uh, Groshen, Cincinnati Inquirer. Hey, Coach. Um, will Gunnar be Gunnar Kiel be practicing, and what do you expect him to? to play or start this week? Yeah, I expect him to play. Uh, he's still a little sore. He's pretty much like he's he's going to be like that the rest of the year. Uh, but, uh, you know, with Jared Evans not with us uh, uh, now on our roster, uh, Munchie's getting a lot of play, uh, practice time, playing time. I thought he played well last week. So, um, you know, we'd, we'd possibly play Munchie also. Uh, play both quarterbacks. I think it's uh, exciting for Munchie to go back home and uh, play in his hometown of New Orleans. And, uh, you know, coming off of a, a good performance last week, I think he'd give us some spark. So uh, uh, looking forward to Gunner playing and also Munchie playing. Would you think Would you think Gunner would start, or what, how would you see that? I don't know. It just depends on, uh, you know, how Munchie practices this week. I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. Our players are rallying around Munchie. And, uh, of course, Gunner's our starter. Uh, I want him to be 100%. Uh, I think it's important that he's 100%. But uh, you know, both of them, both of them uh, give us a different perspective on a game plan. And uh, again, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just excited about both of them playing. But both of them, both of them will play, I'm sure. Thank you. And next, we'll go to Dan Tortora, Dan Tortora, Broadcast Media. Hi, Coach. How are you doing today? Good morning. You just brought up Munchie a little bit there. I just wanted to go into how you've seen him. You talked about his teammates rallying around him, but how he's been there for you throughout the season, knowing that he's not always the quarterback out there and that Gunner has been you know, doing a lot of great things for you. Just how he's been a teammate and not just a quarterback on the roster. Well, he's been as much of a coach as anything. You know, he works with Gunner on the sideline between series and practice, talks about certain things that he's seen. He's just another set of eyes, and I think that's good. It's kept him involved in in, uh, in being involved in the game, whether he's out there on the field or not. And I think he's learned from it. I think he's learned the offense better. Uh, he uh, unfortunately got hurt last year and didn't get didn't get to go through spring practice nor play in the last ten ball games of the year, no bowl practice, but. Uh, you know, I think he's picked up where he's left off. He's he's a mentally strong kid. Uh, physically, you know, he'll never be 100%, but he's pretty close. And I think he's he's working to get those demons out of his head, you know, from last year of having that horrible injury. But, you know, I see a lot of confidence in, in, uh, in Munchie in terms of a, a guy that can do it on the sideline in terms of motivation and also now go out there and get it done on the field. And then is when you look at what 
you were talking about before that you're expecting to have two quarterbacks out there most likely. How do they kind of play off each other and utilize each other, and, and how do you see your offense grow at this point in the season from having two different signal callers that have obviously different talents? Yeah, I, you know, but both of them run the same offense, so we might run a couple of different plays with each one of them, but both of them have got a very good arm. Both of, them, both of them understand the receivers that they have, which is a strong part of our game. I think the big thing that happened last week is we leaned on a uh, true freshman running back in Mike Boone who rushed for 240 yards. But uh, Munchie's been around. He knows the ins and outs of the passing game, who can get the ball, who can make plays in certain situations. And, again, I think sometimes you can learn a lot from standing on that sideline knowing that you're one play from going in. And, uh, you know, I've told him all year long, you got to stay in the game. I know you're not playing much. You're not getting in the game. But you've got to learn as much as anybody. Your turn is coming. And, of course, it came last week. And uh, played against Memphis the second half. He didn't play that well. But uh, last week uh, I thought he did a good job, made good decisions. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm excited about him having the opportunity to play hopefully quite a bit in the next five or six games. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Do you have any other questions for Coach Tuberville, please? Yes, Coach, it's Tom. Go ahead. I'm sorry, please proceed, Mr. Grisham. Uh, Coach, it's Tom Grisham again. Uh, yeah. Do you have any uh, comments you can offer on the Marcus Tappan situation with that going forward? No, he just uh, obviously uh, made a mistake, and you may make a mistake with us. Uh, you know, you forfeit a lot and uh, for an opportunity to play for the Bearcats. So uh, yeah, we'll move on, you know, and, and uh, I think everybody kind of understands that the uh, situation oh, now in sports, you've got to be held accountable, and uh, he has been held accountable. Is he uh, suspended then or off the team, or how does that work? Uh, no, he is uh, suspended indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, we'll thank you for your time today. We look forward to talking to you again thank next you. Monday. Again.